Today, it is hard to believe that these bare hills were once covered in an ancient natural forest. Over the course of thousands of years, that vast primeval forest dwindled and eventually disappeared altogether. The destructive forces of man and animals probably played a part in its devastation. It is perhaps all the more surprising then that this corner of the borders is home to a remarkable collection of plants and trees that thrive in this wild landscape. Although not part of any ancient forest, trees have been planted here at Doik for over three and a half centuries. This enduring passion has, along the way, produced a world-class arboretum and an impressive number of champion specimens. Some of these are the biggest and best in Britain. Today, the garden is a place of peace and tranquility. There is little hint of the extraordinary lengths botanists and plant hunters have gone to in bringing prized specimens back to Doik. Many of the trees and plants that grow here have been collected from remote and inaccessible parts of the world. There is little doubt that this remarkable garden owes its longevity to the fact that over the course of 300 years, only three families have owned Doik. When the Veach family started planting here, this was a barren hillside. They began the transformation of the landscape that continues today. One of the first things they did was to enclose the garden to protect it from grazing animals. In 1650, the Veaches made history by introducing the first exotic tree into Scotland, the horse chestnut. This European silver fir was one of several planted by the Veaches over 300 years ago. This survivor is now the oldest tree in the garden. By the end of the 17th century, the Naismith family owned Doik. Happily, the Naismiths continued the tradition of tree planting. Sir James Naismith studied under Linnaeus, the founding father of botany. It is said that the great man himself witnessed the planting of this European larch in 1725. Naismith's grandson, Sir John, planted these magnificent Douglas firs with seeds collected in North America by the Scottish plant hunter David Douglas. Douglas endured extreme hardships and risked everything to bring these trees to Scotland. By the turn of the 20th century, the Balfour family owned Doig. We have FRS, or Fred Balfour, to thank for the swathes and splashes of vibrant colour in the garden. He planted tons of daffodils and hundreds of rhododendrons. Like his predecessors, Fred Balfour sponsored plant hunting expeditions. The famous plant hunter Ernest Wilson, seen here with a group of reformed headhunters, had hair-raising adventures in China, collecting these rhododendrons. Fred Balfour collected this brewer's weeping spruce during his own expeditions in North America. Over the years, storms as well as people have shaped Doik. In 1968, Hurricane force winds ripped at the garden and thousands of trees were lost. This proved to be a turning point. In 1978, the Balfours gifted the garden to the Royal Botanic Garden, Edinburgh, and a new chapter in the life of Doik had begun. The climate here is unlike any of the other Royal Botanic Garden sites, and so there was an opportunity for the garden staff to extend the range of their living plant collection. This is one of the coldest spots in Britain. In winter, temperatures often fall well below freezing. The summers are relatively warm and wet, with long hours of daylight. In the tradition of Doik, the garden's plant hunters were dispatched across the globe to places with similar climates. Today, plant collecting focuses on research and conservation. These rhododendrons were collected by the garden staff in China. These new plants are not only beautiful, they are part of an important wild origin reference collection. Some of these plants are becoming increasingly rare in the wild. Gardens are, by their nature, in a constant state of change. Climate change has already started to affect the garden, but every cloud has a silver lining. As conditions alter, there will be new opportunities to grow more species of plants. The garden staff are the present-day custodians 
of a much longer story. They will watch and wait and plant for the future just like generations of gardeners before them. These trees are living links with the trials and adventures that have all gone into creating Doik. You can discover these stories for yourself as you walk around the garden today.